Thank you, Terry. That's the 102nd <laughs> introduction you've given me and one of your poorest. <laughs> I'm reminded of the guy that's in the theater draped over three seats. Usher comes down and says, you cannot take more than one seat. And he just goes, ah. Uh. Head Usher comes down and says, you'll have to move or we'll call the police. He just goes, ah. Uh. So they call the police. Two policemen come in. They said, we're going to have to take you in. By the way, where are you from? And the guy says, the balcony. I tell that joke because it leads to what I like to emphasize. I think it's very, very important that we all remember where we're from. And I tell everyone I'm proud to be from Washington State University. I'm proud to be a Cougar. I'm proud that I spent some time at the University of Montana. Part of me looks like a grizzly. But the 19 years that I spent here were very, very special for myself, my family, my friends. Uh, I will always be a Spartan. And I still remember after about the third year I was here that I ended every letter that I wrote to a prospect or a player I signed it, it's great to be a Spartan. I tell you, it's great to be a Spartan. <laughs> Guy is golfing in Scotland. <laughs> Goes into the clubhouse and says, I need a caddy. And they say, we don't have caddies. Everyone walks the course here. He said, you don't understand. I cannot see the ball after I hit it. My vision is so bad. They said, oh, we will get you someone to help you. He's on the first tee, and an, about an 80-year-old guy comes shuffling over. He says, what are you here for? He says, I'm here to help you. Can you see? He says, I see like an eagle. Okay, so he hits the first ball off the tee. He said, did you see that? I said, yeah, I saw that. How did I hit it? He says, you hit it great. He says, it felt good. They start down the fairway. The guy turns to the old man. He says, where is it? He says, I can't remember. <laughs> Now, I tell you that because I can't remember everybody or everyone or every situation in my 45-year career. But there are just a few people I would like to remember. First is Marv Harshman, my coach at Washington State University head coach gave me a start in college basketball. Dr. Joe Kearney, who hired me here at Michigan State University. Doug Weaver, the athletic director, who we went through the good years and the in-between years. Bob Weiss and Joel Ferguson, the two trustees that stuck with the program through thick and thin, and especially Bob and I, who are instrumental in getting Michigan State to the Final Four for three consecutive years. <laughs> I shouldn't tell this story because I didn't plan on it, but I see Bob there with a big grin on his face. And when Dick Bennett quit at Wisconsin, I called Tom 
and said, what's the deal? He says, he just got so wrapped up that he couldn't coach. He was vomiting the day of the game. And I said, hell, Bob Weiss does that. <laughs> but I want to thank all the coaches, all the players, all the administrators involved in my career, but I especially want to thank my family, my lovely wife, Beverly, my son, Dr. Jerry Heathcote, my two daughters that couldn't be here tonight, Carla, Carla and Barbie, and it's great when your family is your number one fan. Would they stand up, please? As I think of the evening, I'm just reminded of what I use now and then as the naked lady said to the peeping Tom, thanks for looking in. <laughs> and looking in to the group that, you know, I remember we had a, a guy in high school we called Weldy, because uh, he got A in welding class. <laughs> And I remember talking with Pat Wilson, Doug Weaver, and, and they'd always talk about John being the smart one, Pat being the dumb one. <laughs> and Doug always said, hey, if you're looking for an argument, pick a different subject. <laughs> I remember Sue Ertle so well, you know, as the head coach here. I never saw Sue that she didn't have a smile on her face. Uh, I don't know what she was smiling about, but uh, <laughs> hey, she's a wonderful gal. Just, and by the way, Terry, I did not appreciate the call wanting to know if I knew where the Jerry DePredo family was. <laughs> What can I say about Steve Smith, my, one of my all-time favorite players on the, the court, one of the greatest ambassadors for Michigan State University? You know, when we had the dedication, they raffled off that picture of the President Steve signing that uh, picture when he signed over, uh, you know, one uh, thirtieth of his salary that year, two and a half million dollars. <laughs> But I outbid Joe Dumars for that picture, $2,200, and it sits right in my den, and I look at it every single day, every time I have a TV program on, and wish I could have that money back. <laughs> But Steve, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for being uh, just a great friend. Uh, boy, I could not believe John Wilson getting up here and saying, Hoosier defeats Boilermakers. For all the time that Doug was athletic director, we had the headlines. Hoosier drinks Boilermakers. <laughs> you know, I'm going to close with a, with a joke that maybe relates to me now with my bad hip and so on. A guy is sitting at the bar and this ugliest, oldest, dirtiest, long-haired guy comes up to the guy and says, give me 20 bucks. The guy says, I'm not going to give you 20 bucks. You would just drink it up. The guy says, I have not had a drink in 40 years. He says, well, you would just gamble it away. He said, I have never gambled on anything. He said, you would squander it on the golf course. He said, I have never played golf in my life. So the guy says, well, if you'll come home with me and meet my wife, I'll give you the 20 bucks. He said, well, I'll do that, but why? 
He says, I want her to see what I'm going to look like if she doesn't let me drink, gamble, and play golf. <laughs>